And welcome back to You Reach Item 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina that I think that you should know. And today we're going to be talking about another logical fallacy. Uh, and if I'm pronouncing this right, it's the two quoque fallacy. Uh, so how this one's going to work is you're in an argument, and your opponent points out that your data sucks, your conclusion sucks, and if people followed your advice, we'd basically be putting, uh, uh, building an apartment block consisting of uh, spinning knives and all sorts of danger dangerous things. And your response to that is, well, that's just the kind of ex you know thinking that I'd expect from a dyed-in-the-wool bureaucrat with no respect for artistic merit. Of course, that would be committing the Tukokwe fallacy of answering criticism with criticism, of not necessarily acknowledging your mistake, uh, but putting the onus on the other person uh, and pointing out what's wrong with him rather than acknowledging the reality of your claims and any flaws in it. So there, there's this error that you have made. And, you, you, and while it, it may be true that the audience uh, is subject to the, the criticism that you levy against them, who it just so happens are denying the validity of your claims, um, but in that case, or even in that case, uh, your data, your argument, your conclusions are not necessarily valid, and they should not believe them or treat them as valid if they are not. So in general, as in previous uh, fallacies, this is going to have something of a, a logical form to it. So, it, 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 one way you could kind of draw this out is to have the first person say, well, we should do X. The second person should say, well, X is a bad idea. And then the first person, as a response to that, would say, well, your idea Y is also a bad idea. And notice that X being a bad idea is never necessarily discounted. Uh, there is no attempt to make X as the entire uh, scope of possibilities, or at least X and Y the entire scope of possibilities. All that is done is merely to di misdirect the other person, uh, to mislead the other person into thinking about this other issue, why, uh, without considering the virtues or the benefits, uh, along with their costs, of idea X. So this doesn't necessarily mean that X is a bad idea, uh, but the argument in question, uh, or at least uh, in relation to how it's presented here, uh, is certainly not valid. So, going back to similar or related videos, the Ignorantio Alenci video, in which you could go back and watch, uh, I encourage you to go and see some of the other videos if you haven't in this series. Uh, but in, in that particular uh, context, uh, you're, you're convincing them, uh, or you're convincing the other person of an irrelevant conclusion. You're, you're making it so that. You're, you're, even if you succeed in convincing, or the first pers first person succeeds in convincing the, the second that this why idea is a bad idea, it's not the conclusion that was initially set out to be concluded, i.e. that X is a good idea. And so this is, again, going to be related to other uh, videos as well, uh, the division and composition videos, uh, just because uh, that person, an idiot, for example, doesn't necessarily mean that everything that they say is invalid, as we kind of spoke about in those. Uh, same thing with the argument from prestige. Uh, this is kind of like an inverse of the ar argument from prestige, or converse, uh, one of the two, uh, where your, your opponent is so low in status, or so low in prestige, that their opinions have no validity, and we've discussed why that isn't necessarily true in that video. So in general, take responsibility for your own correctness. 
let other people be wrong. Uh, don't necessarily let them disagree with you willingly, but at the same time, if they persist on doing so and being wrong, at the end of the day, it's going to be their choice to do so. What are some examples that this particular uh, fallacy has come up in recent times? The, the one that happened yesterday, I was reading a thread on Reddit, uh, where uh, apparently the Ontario Provincial School Board uh, is paying for these advertisements, either on TV or somewhere, uh, for their sex ed program. And the question is, well, why are there advertisements for a school curriculum? That's a very strange thing. Uh, and the response was uh, that there are, because there are idiots who don't believe that it's necessary. Uh, and this is actually committing this fallacy because it's, it's putting the onus of why this is happening in the first place based on the, uh, against the people who disagree with it entirely. Uh, and without kind of acknowledging that there's any merit uh, to the advertisements as such occurring. Um, here's another example where this kind of comes up. Uh, well, in, in debates between NDP partisans and conservative party, uh, partisans in this up upcoming election here, uh, has, there's been more than a couple instances where it's been pointed out that, well, you know, we, we, we can't trust the NDP to have a, a, the, the, the balance of power in the federal government because, you know, they would bankrupt the country. And the response to that is, well, you know, your party will bankrupt the country uh, if you're allowed to continue to govern. Now, that may even be true, uh, but that isn't a proper response to that particular level of criticism because, again, it's committing this logical fallacy. Uh, now, there may be ways of, of saying that into uh, convincing the uh, other opponent that the, you know, the choice between two parties who bankrupt a country uh, or could potentially bankrupt a country isn't you know, necessarily one we face, etc. But again, that, that's kind of beyond the scope of this particular argument form. Here's another place where this comes up. Uh, quote, you know, yes, we could all use Linux, but the Linux user experience sucks and we can't do, you know, blah, uh, on it, uh, and so that there's this uh, kind of hidden structure of that particular statement, uh, where we it kind of assumes that there's that the, the not being able to do things on a proprietary platform is the same kind of problem as not being able to do things on a, a free platform, and that there's no kind of difference between uh, being locked down permanently and having just the tools not quite doing what you need them to do yet. Um, and so the, the, the kind of accusation of, well, we, we can't justify using this free platform because, uh, you know, it just doesn't do this or, or it because, you know, it, it can't do this or et cetera, uh, again, kind of runs the risk of running into this particular uh, fallacy. Uh, here's some other examples. The, you know, arming al-Qaeda in Syria is a, a justifiable idea because Assad is bad and it's okay to overthrow him. Arming the Mujahideen in Afghanistan is justified because the Soviet Union is bad and, you know, it, it, it's a good idea to overthrow them, quote unquote. Uh, quote, arming terrorists in Central America is okay because if they're really freedom fighters and they're fighting socialists in South America and socialists are bad, quote unquote. Each of these examples is, again, an example of this, where the, 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 the question is, should we be arming, you know, these armed groups that are committing atrocious acts uh, is justified by the, you know, the people that they are fighting against. Uh, in the case of Syria, it was the Canadian government and the American government supporting Al-Qaeda. Uh, in the case of Afghanistan, again, it was the pre kind of Al-Qaeda Mujahideen. Uh, in the case of Central America, it was those trained at the School of Americas. In each of these cases, uh, there was people who ended up doing horrible, horrible things sometimes against even Western interests who were justified uh, or, or who the, the powers in the West were justified or, or thought they were justified in supporting because at least they weren't the other guys. So again, th these are just some examples of where this does come up in practice, uh, especially in heated debates. Uh, I encourage you, whatever you're thinking about accusing the other person of of something in response to their poking at your argument or your data set or your beliefs to pause, take a deep breath, and then think about whether or not that is actually relevant to what they said and whether or not it is relevant to proving your particular point and whether it can be, in fact, avoided. So, uh, as usual, if you have any questions or would like more examples of 
uh, this particular fallacy uh, being used in practice. Feel free to ask for anywhere where this video is posted. Um, and as usual, there should be a little Bitcoin address in the bottom somewhere uh, for you to go find and donate some Bitcoin to so that we can continue to have these nice whiteboard markers uh, for these videos. And uh, as usual, there will be more videos to come. So hopefully we'll see you in the next video.